Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking neon glow effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 for our main comp and then a duration of about 10 seconds. Once we've done that, then I need to create a new composition and I'm just going to call this one shape, but this time this is going to be a square. So it's going to be 1920 by 1920. Leave everything else the same. So now once we've got that, what we need to do is we need to create a new solid. So I'm just going to go right click new solid and I'm going to call this shape. And with the shape layer selected, I'm just going to come over here to the rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a rectangle on my composition. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the align tools and make sure that I align it to the center of my composition. So once I've done that, then I need to search for an effect called Saber. Now I can drag that to my shape layer. Now I need to change a few things. I'm going to change the glow bias to about 0.3 and I'm going to change the core size to about 2. And then I need to go to customize core and change the core type to layer masks. And now you will see the glow on the outside of the actual rectangle. So that's looking pretty good. So now if your anchor point is not in the middle, you will need to come over here, hold control and double click that pan behind anchor point tool to make sure that that's in the middle because we're going to do a bit of animation that requires rotation and if that's not in the middle everything will be thrown out. So now we're up to animating and so what we need to do is we're going to look at three different things to animate. We're going to look at the scale so I'm going to press S for scale. I'm going to hold shift and press T for opacity and I'm also going to hold shift and press R for rotation. So these are the three main things that we are going to work on. So the first one, let's come over here and hit the stopwatch for scale. I'm just going to bring it down to, let's say 20. And then I'm going to move to three seconds in time. And then I'm just going to bring it up to 120. Now you don't want the rectangle to go outside of your composition. So if you have to change those settings, then do so. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to apply a keyframe for rotation. We're going to start it at zero degrees. We're going to get to three seconds and then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. So now we've got this really nice rotating rectangle. So the only other thing that's left is the opacity. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come to one second. I'm going to hit the stopwatch at 100%. And while I'm there, I'm going to move to two seconds and I'm just going to put another keyframe at 100%. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move back to the start of the animation and I'm going to change the first keyframe to 0% and then I'm going to do the same for the end of the animation. So 0% just like that. So now we've got this really nice rectangle that is fading in and fading out. And so I think that looks pretty cool. To dress this up even more, what we can do is we can come over here and we can easy ease them. And once you've done that, then the next thing that you need to do is you need to change the mode to screen. So if you don't see screen, you can always hit toggle switches down there at the bottom. Continuously loop for the duration of the composition. So that's looking pretty good. So the next thing that we need to do, so now that we have one rectangle animating, we need to duplicate that three times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset these keyframes. So I'm going to bring that second layer to one second and the third layer to about two seconds. And so now I've got this kind of infinite loop happening here. Now it's not really that exciting. So we're going to change up the colors. So on the first layer, I'm just going to go to color hunt to get my colors and then I'm going to import them in. So now I'm using this color scheme from color hunt. So all I need to do is just click on it and then drag it into After Effects. So now to make this animation a little bit more interesting, what we're going to do is we're just going to press U on all of our layers and I'm going to come into the middle shape layer and I'm going to highlight these two keyframes for scale. I'm going to hit the graph editor. Now if you don't see this, it's the speed graph editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring these uh, points a little bit closer together, just like that. And so now if we preview that, 
So the first rectangle doesn't change, but then the second one has a little bit more acceleration on it and it just makes the animation a little bit different. Now you can do the same for the other sides as well. So for example, you can, um, you know, play around with some of the settings there. Maybe you can have one with uh, more acceleration or more deceleration and just to make it a little bit different. So there I've got one, then it rotates, then it comes back and etc. So now once we're finished with animating, what we need to do is we need to go to the original comp and drag the shape composition down to the timeline. And it's a little bit big, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to bring it down to, let's say about 20%. So I'm just gonna decrease the scale. And then once I've done that, then I can look for an effect called motion tile and drag it to that shape layer. And now what you need to do is you need to bump up the width and height to get the effect that you want. Now, if you wanna make it a bit smaller, you can always experiment. So if I bring it down to 15, obviously there's gonna be more shapes on here. Now, if you wanna change up a few things, you can go to mirror edges and you can also change the phase to make it look a little bit, you know, not so uniform. So now that we've done motion tile, the next thing that we need to do is we need to add a camera. So I'm just gonna come over here and go with an 80 mil camera. I then need to go to my toggle switches and make sure that my shape layer is a 3D layer. Then I'm gonna come back over and open up the camera settings and go into the camera, go into the transform settings. I'm gonna hit the stopwatch for point of interest and I'm just gonna move forward to about one second just so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna press C on my keyboard to bring up the orbit tool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to orbit around to a place that I like where this animation will start. Now, if you can start to see the edge, that means that you need to go back into your shape layer and you need to bump up the width and height a little bit more, just so it fills the entire uh, composition. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move to the end of my timeline and then I'm going to rotate it, let's say the other way, and I'm gonna move it just a bit like that. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to return those keyframes back to the edge of that composition and so now if I preview that you will see now that the camera is now rotating as well and that's looking pretty cool but now it's getting a little bit you know intense for my computer so I can just scrub through it just to show you like that so now the final steps that we need to do to dress this up number one we're gonna add an adjustment layer so I'm just gonna come over here and search for an effect called noise and I'm gonna bring the noise up to about 7%. I'm gonna go back onto the shape layer and I'm also going to add a echo. Now, if your computer wasn't handling the amount of shapes that you have, it's really not gonna handle echo. So I'm just gonna bring this down to about 0.1 and that gives a really cool kind of unique uh, look to the, the squares inside of your composition and I think that's looking pretty cool. It even makes it glow a little bit more as well. So the final thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a new text layer over here and I'm just gonna call it Glow. I'm using Mission Gothic here and I'm just gonna use the bold version. I'm just gonna align it to the center of my document. And the final thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come to my effects and I'm gonna search for some drop shadow and I'm gonna add that to my glow and I'm just gonna maybe change the distance slightly and I think that's about it. Now, the one last thing that I did is in the adjustment layer, I did create a new adjustment layer and I dragged on some, uh, some speckles and dust and things like that. So you can dress it up however you want. But anyways, guys, that's about it for this uh, short tutorial on how to create a neon glow patterned effect. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.